Yes, that dreaded moment has arrived. It's time to say goodbye to the 2016 Summer Olympics. But what an incredible send-off we were given at the closing ceremony. All of our senses were treated with an array of different sights, smells and sounds. It's something that I will definitely never forget. But as we say ciao to Rio, we say uh, konnichiwa to Tokyo as they took on the mantle of hosting the Games. And that, of course, is in 2020. And I'm sure they'll be very well versed in uh, hosting Games as they do have, of course, the uh, 2019 Rugby World Cup just the year before so I'm sure it will run very smoothly and efficiently and any problems we've seen here with the likes of transport technology shouldn't be an issue that is considered the home of both of those to a lot of people so I'm really looking forward to that one but it would be a miss of me if I didn't mention some of the problems uh, we saw in Rio de Janeiro not just before the games but um, also of course during and inevitably afterwards as well and um, the IOC have recognised this with their president Thomas Bach and that is why they've come up with Agenda 2020 which is their strategic roadmap for the Olympic movement. Here there are 40 recommendations that outline how the Games can still continue to be after 120 years the pinnacle of world sport and getting everyone engaged and coming back to it. And Jamie Corr, who is now the VP of uh, Global Sports and Entertainment Consulting at GMR, used to be at the IOC, so he knows it better than most. And he's written a fantastic piece you should see online um, on GMR website, looking at some of the recommendations. But there are a few that really caught my eye, especially after spending the week here. The first has to be um, around hosting the Games and the costs of that, along with sustainability. We've just seen in London how important sustainability is. And uh, with uh, West Ham, who've just taken over the Olympics, Olympic Stadium, playing their first game there recently, it's fantastic to see. So there aren't white elephants dotted around the entire city, but actually hosting the games in the bidding process is so expensive. And this is a couple of recommendations in there taken up about how you can reduce those costs, because it's fair to say, not everyone in Rio was happy. Not all the karaoke's were uh, very um, keen on that idea, especially considering they had the 2014 Football World Cup. So. That is one issue, but the one that really stood out to me in the recommendations is the creation of this Olympic channel. We got a taste of it with Kai Go in the closing ceremony, he gave a little introduction to it, and we've seen various um, interactions on different social media channels such as Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, but it needs to be done. It's great to see the IOC and the Olympics uh, moving with the times, and because some of the content that is captured is absolutely breathtaking. You cannot compare it to anything else in the world and it is consumed by billions. So it's great to see and I'm looking forward to it because let's be honest the next games are in Tokyo and um, they are as I say the four, at the forefront of all technology it seems. So I'm sure there'll be some brilliant content captured and they can be shared all over the world during that time. But that's it from Rio and to be honest everyone should be so proud of themselves everyone in Rio everyone really in Brazil to be honest it has been an absolutely superb show they've put on there's been a smorgasbord of color uh, at the forefront of everything not just the closing ceremony and that seems to be the way of life here so I thoroughly enjoyed it I sh hope you have too anywhere you've consumed it and also some of my coverage but um, for now that's pretty much it and uh, all I can say is I'm really looking forward to Tokyo 2020 and I'm sure it will be an Absolutely brilliant show. Bye for now.